please note that this video contains spoilers. Put off by how long this video is, don't worry, I tend to jam-pack my videos with as much content, as many details as I possibly can, and I try to talk pretty fast, so while the video is a bit on the long side, I don't repeat myself, and I get into a lot of details about the subject that you know, pretty much anything that I feel I can comment on and that I think you might find interesting. To Unchained Movie Thoughts. I quite like the... the poetic justice. I, I feel like some of it is meant to make us uncomfortable and that's, excuse me, part of what I do like about it. Excuse me, when, when we see Django excuse me, whip his former, excuse me, one of his former abusive, you know, slave keepers, I don't know what exactly the title was, it's, you know, it's in a way sort of empowering. It's, it's nice to see the tables turn, and, and, and at the same time, it's also kind of, yeah, you, you know, it's, it's not pleasant to see someone treated like that, even if we know that they deserve it. And I did really like the turn of the, you know, I like the way you, I like the way you beg, boy, I like the way you die, boy. That was, that was really great. And the, what was it, Billy Boyd, who, you know, where were we? Right, last time you had your hands on my and the dude screams, and I can't blame him. And I think it was also Billy Boyd who, when he smiled, you see he was like missing one tooth from the side. That's a really great detail. I, th I feel like I've seen him in more movies, and he just has that face that makes him a great kind of not main villain, but one of these guys who the anti-hero is clearly going to gun down, who's going to antagonize the anti-hero and be gunned down in a spaghetti western. And when I mention Billy Boyd being shot like that, I do have to mention that guy who got shot by everyone lying on the floor during the big shootout near the end of the film, after the, after Dr. Schultz kills Candy, which is also, you insist on shaking my hand, and out comes the little, you know, gun pops out of the sleeve, and he shoots him, and he says, I'm sorry, I couldn't help it, that's, that's wonderful, and he gets shot, of course, and, yeah, everyone shoots, shoots at Django, and this one guy's lying there, and he just keeps getting shot. And then after the whole thing's over, you see him still lying there, and he's got like a fat guy lying over part of him. He's just lying there, oh man. That was, that was pretty funny. And the... One, you know, when, when the skull comes out, around the, you know, when, when, it, when it's hammer time, and Leo reminisces and you know, goes all, Alas, I knew him well, and it, I really liked the thing with, you know, Sold! Sold to the man with the beard! That's, wow, that was, and, and it was also around the time of, I read that, like, Leo slammed his hand and, like, you know, literally cut his hand and blood came out, and you could see that in the tape. They, they used that tape in the movie. I understand why Tarantino used that take. Man, Leo, that was method acting. You just went ahead and used that. You know, what would my character do if he had hit, you know, he just uses that physical pain to further, I mean, he, the character's frustrated in the scene, so yeah, that, wow. And I wanted to say I loved seeing Tom Savini and Michael Parks in there, the, you know, when he's like talking to the talking to the slaves, asking it just it's just 
the way Michael Parks talks, I understand why Tarantino keeps putting him in movies. I, yeah. It's just fantastic. It just, I might not go rewatch, like, you know, both Kill Bill volumes and From Dusk Till Dawn. Michael Parks is awesome. And that might more or less. I, just, I like the style throughout. I like the opening credits, the, the color and the font, and the, the title theme music. Django! It's just. The, the whole style. And then, you know, he actually uses rap music and it just it fits. And I was just sitting there, just, you know, pumping my fist and just enjoying the crap out of it. Now, the. And, and Tarantino's cameo. With the with the dynamite, it's just, if you're gonna write yourself in your own movie, and it's it's a movie full of death, of course you're gonna die yourself, and of course you're gonna write this really memorable, fun death for yourself. This it goes without saying, and it's just it's great the way they set it up. But this, you know, you you can ride the that you know pack horse of you know, it's carrying all the diamond. I ain't riding the horse for the carrying diamond. You know, it's, it makes sense. Right? He doesn't wanna risk dying as an okay, just throw it in with the slaves, you know. And first Tarantino goes in with, with the handful, ah, here's some dynamite for you to play with, and they're just scared, and he laughs at them with that annoying laugh that Tarantino has, and you know, closes the door, goes over to the horse, and we just see him open the the other bag, and take up some dynamite, okay, it's dynamite, puts it back down, just, you know, checking, there's dynamite, and letting us, the audience, know there's dynamite in there, and he picks it up, and then we don't see him for a few, you know, like a half a minute or something, and then Django's talking to the others, like, you know, I, I gotta get a gun, you know, just a gun on the horse, that's all I'm asking, and let, let me help kill them, you know. Okay, just don't drop my belt and my gun. I just had the sight readjusted. It's perfect now. Good to know. <laughs> Shoots Michael Parks afterwards. And Tarantino, who's standing there with this bag full of dynamite, and he shoots the bag. No! <laughs> Awesome. That is just wow. Yeah, that. I'm not sure why they were supposed to be Australian though, because they clearly were. They they spoke with Australian accent. There, there were at least two of them that were Australian. Tarantino's character and one of the others, definitely Australian. I'm not sure even Parks was supposed to be Australian. I'm not sure he passed for that, but you know, even if he did try. But some of them were supposed to be. But I don't know. Maybe there were Australian immigrants around that time in that. But but yeah, that was and and Django you know, uses some lies and some truth. Because yes, he is a bounty hunter and he did come in not as a slave. So when they asked the other slaves, did this guy come in and was he a slave? Yo, he did come in but he was definitely not a slave, you know, just yeah. I think that pretty well covers the, the bits that I really loved of recurring elements and dialogue were the One in Ten Thousand and Little Troublemaker, Big Troublemaker. You know, he's Big Troublemaker, so when she finally has a chance to respond to him calling her Little Troublemaker, that's what she calls him, and then you kind of get, ah, he was always kind of the Big Troublemaker. So, while she does try to escape, she, yeah. He is the bigger. Yeah, I, I believe that covers it. I could, of course, also talk about the pre KKK, KKK, and pretty much everything involving Don Johnson in the film, but I'd really just be going over absolutely everything. Like I said in the review, I love when he's trying to explain, excuse me, how they should, excuse me, treat Django. Excuse me, don't treat him like a slave, but excuse me, don't treat him like a wife. And he me, comes up with this very specific example of this, I guess, poor kid or slightly, yeah, not, not the most popular white person, something like that, you know, Jerry. And uh, yeah, I just, it, it, I, I've said, I said pretty much everything I wanted to about that specific exchange in the review, but 
I just love the whole thing. I love how he plays the role. I love the consistent point of the way to deal with these people is to appeal to their greed because they're using black people, they, they are using another ethnicity of people as slaves because they want money. They, they want to do better without having to do too much of the work themselves and they're willing to abuse another ethnicity of people just for that. So obviously their weakness is the money. They're willing to give away a lot of their humanity and empathy just for that. So with both Don Johnson and Calvin Candy, it's about offering a ridiculous amount of money. You know, and, and the thing with Don Johnson, how he you know, he wants to see the, the thing and he reads through it and okay, can I have it back? And he hands it to him, but he still holds on to it. Okay. Get off my property because he knows he can't do anything to them. He was just told, you know, if you do anything to us, you know, you will be hanged and uh, yeah. Or or is it hung? No wait, that's that's should not go there because it yeah. Actually, since you probably already went there, it would be as if I did go there, so I will go ahead and go there and then explain the jokes so you don't take it the wrong way. Django's the one who's hung, and by that I don't mean that as a slave he would be hung if he did something wrong to be punished for that. No, I mean he is black, and the stereotype about black people is that they are quite well endowed in the sense of their sexual organs, the, the size of their sexual organs. I have, I did not mean to make a lynching joke, I promise you that. Now, the, when the, I, I also like the, the point of he, you know, Waltz did not want her playing Beethoven, you know, because he was thinking of all these awful things he had seen in relation to the slavery, and he also, he, broke character. He was willing to pay for that slave, the uh, Mandingo fighter who was quitting. You know, he had spent so much energy trying to run away. He had been away for like 24 hours, so he had spent so much energy. He had worked himself down and he couldn't do two more fights. And besides the third fight he had done, he almost lost that one. So yeah, he could not do the last fights. He doesn't have the money to pay back and he's going to be made an example out of. Now, the, I, I like the, just in general, how the plan that Christoph Waltz uses, and I wonder if this is like something Tarantino thought of, or if he saw it in one of those old westerns that he loves, with going in and just shooting the guy, and then when, you know, when authorities arrive, he just, no, no, no wait, I'm just a bounty hunter, and that guy was one of the bad guys, see, I have the paper right here. I love the entire exchange with the sheriff. You know, the, the just don't call the marshal, call the sheriff. And it's, it, help, sheriff! And then, you know, those in there having a conversation for five minutes, everyone in the audience knows the sheriff's gonna be there in just a few minutes. And it's typical Tarantino. He does this where you know in just a few minutes that's going to happen. So it's, and no, it's, we're gonna sit here and have this conversation while that happens. It's, it's like in. Crap, I can't say that. I don't know if I can even make another reference to a Tarantino movie without spoiling that Tarantino movie, but you Tarantino fans know what I'm talking about. So anyway, yeah, the, the bit with the, and then the sheriff shows up and he you know, shoots him. Now you can call the marshal. And he goes in there and they just, sh shouldn't we run now? Just, and, and everyone, you know, I want two guns up there, I want two guns up there. And we got a hundred guns pointed at the judge. And you know, he's, they're all standing there and, and he yells, just remember, you, know, you, you obey the law so you're not going to shoot us down when, when we exit as long as we come out with our hands above our heads, right? What, you mean like you just shot the sheriff? Like a dog in the street? Precisely. You're not going to shoot us like a dog in the street, are you? Much as I'd love to, much as we'd all love to, no. And he comes out and he says, no, oh, well, the sheriff was a bad guy. See, here's the proof. And the, just brilliant. And, and he said, as I'll tell you and your men and 
all of adultery it appears. Yeah, just the whole thing is just fantastic. And the, yeah, I, I, I want to go into more detail about the pre -KK, KKK. And yes, indeed, according to the IMDb trivia at least, the KKK were not, you know, they did not exist at that point, but this group that were before the KKK did, I don't remember what they were actually called though, but that's what they, those are supposed to be. And the thing about how it's this one guy's wife who spent all day cutting two holes in 30 sacks for all of them and just they're, they're not quite, they can't see the moment they start riding and the whole thing, it's just really funny and this whole conversation and just, look, I, I didn't, nobody's saying that Jenny did a bad job. You know, I, look, I think we all, we all like the idea of the bags. But since they are not ideal, maybe just this once, we could go in without the bags. And next time when we have better bags, we could go in with bags and everything. Just, does everyone agree? And then Don John is like, no, no, wait, 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 wait. I did not say that we would go in without the masks. And just the whole thing. And then they ride in and they're like, you know, let's pull the slave. Wait, that's not him. Where, where, where are they? And bullseye as the thing explodes and you just you knew that was one of those moments you knew that that was a trap but Tarantino still has his go like wow did not expect that to happen when it does happen I don't I do not know what it is that he does but the man can just lull us into this sense of like we feel even if we basically know what's gonna happen we are still somehow surprised, and they, st of course, shoot down Don Johnson as well. You know, I, th I think that was even Django who shot him. And I love when they're supposed to shoot, like, the third guy, because he's, like, out in the field. The other two were together. So first Django shoots one, the other one can't get the gun, he just keeps dropping it, and he gets whipped, shot. Y'all want to see something? And then the third one, you know, Christopher Waltz is there with the, the, the rifle. And you're sure, you're, you're sure that's the, the guy? Yes. Positive? N uh, what? N uh, no. What? You're, you're not sure if you're positive? I don't know what positive means. Positive means you're sure. Yes. Yes what? Yes! I'm, that, that is the guy. I'm positive he's dead. Because <laughs> he learned it. He learned the new word. And that's also the thing. He memorizes the, the first wanted poster. And he has it in his pocket. So when he is to lie about the, you know, the, the gang and the, because they, they killed that guy, you, you know, months ago, half a year ago. But he just tells them, well, they were hiding there and that money for, just, just ride on him, kill them, and that's all, you know. And they're all like, well, this is a big, you know, we could earn a lot of money here and it would be genuinely earned, so yeah. And just the whole thing really nicely crafted it's 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 done in this way where at least in the world that Tarantino creates that we get to inhabit for you know almost three hours this time in that world it is believable maybe it wouldn't happen in the real world it probably wouldn't it's it's a bit more cartoony and just yeah but in that world yeah, it could happen, and, and that world feels complete. I, I remember hearing him say in an interview once that he once saw a movie where he suddenly realized this director does not know what the, where the bad guy comes from, or something like that. And he says, the audience doesn't have to know where the bad guy comes from, but they have to know that the director knows where he comes from and knows what he ate as a child and what he really wants and all this stuff because it's part of creating a full world and when you watch a Tarantino movie you can just tell he does know all this. I mean, I don't know what Tom Savini's character you know, had for breakfast that day or what his childhood was like, but I don't doubt for a second that Tarantino knows. It's just, it's in the way these characters dress, it's in the way they behave. He just, he knows these characters and he loves them and he wants 
to put them up there on the screen for us to enjoy. And yeah, I just keep coming, keep keep making them, Quentin. Man. Please rate and comment, and hey, if you like this video, that subscribe button's just waiting for you to click it.